Glorious game creating Swifters, it's Prof G, and in this lesson we are going to add game mechanics to the Word Garden app, meaning we'll actually write the code so that we can play a game. We'll update the gameplay as we guess words, and allow for the game to restart when all words have been guessed. And we'll update the flower image with each incorrectly guessed letter. Now we'll be adding animation and sound in the next video, but we're getting close to finishing up our first Swift UI game. Ready to code? Giddy up! So at this point, the game status message in our Word Garden app holds the message currently labeled how many guesses to uncover the hidden word. But we want this to update after each guess, telling the user how many guesses they've made, and eventually we're going to want to show whether they've guessed or missed the complete word, and also give a message when they've guessed all of the words. So first, we should show a message that says something like you've made X number of guesses after each guess. And to do this, we need to keep track of the number of letters that have been guessed, but we're already kind of doing this. We can simply use the count of letters guessed guest string. And since we'll need to update this code and some other code inside the closure where the guess a letter button is pressed, as well as inside of the on submit closure when the done key is pressed, let's create a new function to hold our gameplay updates. So we'll do this right underneath the guess a letter function before the final closure in the struct. So we'll say func. And why don't we call this update gameplay, lower camel case, open and close parens, no parameters are going to be passed in here, and we'll open and close curlies. And then let's call update gameplay, and we'll do that in the on submit closure just after we call guess a letter, and in the guess a letter button closure also after we call guess a letter. And now let's update the game status message inside our new function update gameplay like this. Game status message equals you've made string interp guesses, and inside string interp we'll say letters guess dot count. Now this works, but the guesses should be singular when the count is one. Right now it says you've made one guesses instead of you've made one guess, but we can easily fix this with the ternary operator. So right after guesses, I'm going to delete the ES, I'm going to put in a string interp with no space, and I'll say letters guess dot count equals equals one, so that's the condition that's true or false. Then question mark, if this is true, then we want this to be singular, so I'll just pass in an empty string with double quotes colon, but if it's false, I'm going to pass in between double quotes ES to turn guess into guess is for plural. Run this. After one guess, it's just guess. After more than one guess, we've got guesses. Looking good. Now we should check to see if the letter guessed by the player is correct or not. And if it's not a correct guess, then we should keep track of how many guesses the user still has. So we'll need a variable for that. And when a wrong guess has been made, we should subtract one from this new variable. So let's create a variable to keep track of how many guesses the player still has. And we'll call this guesses remaining. So we'll do this up top with the other state variables. And I'll put this right under a letters guessed, although you could pretty much put it anywhere. And I'll say at state private var guesses remaining equals eight and it's eight because there are eight petals on the flower and we have one image for the flower with eight petals seven petals six petals they're named flower eight flower seven flower six and we want to lose one petal with each incorrect guess but when the user's done guessing a word and they move on to the next word we're gonna have to reset this value in our code and rather than hard code this as the value eight in our code it's better programming practice to set up a constant so that if you wanted to at some point use a different number of images that allowed for more or fewer guesses you could simply update that constant in just one place, and that would change the value all throughout the code wherever you refer to that constant. So down here where we have our words to guessed constant string array, I'm going to enter a new constant private let maximum guesses equals eight. And then down in the on appear modifier that's under the V stack, we'll set guesses remaining equal to maximum guesses. So even though we originally set the guesses remaining to eight, if we change the maximum guesses to a different number, that's gonna change this as soon as the app runs. So if you change the maximum guesses available to a user, you just change it in one place. Now down in the update gameplay method, let's check to see if the guessed letter is in the word to guess. And if it's not, we'll subtract one from guesses remaining. So we'll say if word to guess dot contains, and we'll pass guess letter in between the parentheses, and we've got open open and close curlies after this, but what we really want to do is not find when word guess contains guest letter, but we want to find out when it does not contain guest letter. So we can do this simply by adding an exclamation point in front of word to guess, and this will be true when the opposite happens, or when word to guess does not contain guest letter. Remember the exclamation point acts as a not, so it flips true to false or false to true, 
And uh, one very important thing we need to do, we set word to guess to an empty string up here in the guess a letter function right at the end. Let's cut this out and we'll paste it to the end of the update gameplay function so we can be sure that we have a value in guest letter up here when we check to see if guest letter is inside of word to guess. Then inside the curlies we just wrote, if word to guess doesn't contain guest letter, we guessed a wrong letter, so we should subtract one from the guesses remaining with guesses remaining and we'll use the shorthand minus equals one. Now if we have this, we can use guesses remaining to update the image name, passing in the value for the flower number that we should use. So after we subtract one from guess remaining, let's write image name equals, in double quotes, flower, string interp, passing in guesses remaining. And let's try this out. I'll press in S and ugh. Here's another bug in my version of Xcode. Again, I'm using a beta version, so hopefully this doesn't happen. But you see how the S that I typed didn't go into the text field in the preview canvas. Instead, it stayed here in my code and it created this error because the S was typed at the end of this variable. And it's still doing this. Again, hopefully your Xcode is behaving itself, but no big deal for me. I can just click on the play button here and run this in the simulator. And as this runs, let me also point out that the next change that we're gonna wanna make. You see how the game status message starts out on two lines here. It says, how many guesses to uncover the hidden word? Now watch this text view. The height is gonna change when we change the text inside of it. So I'm gonna press an S. It says, you made one guess, singular, which is good, but the height in this is only one line. So my interface changes locations. It looks like it jumps up on my screen and you usually don't want that to happen in your app that's not a good look so the next thing we need to do is to set a fixed height for the text view but let's keep testing for the change that we just made in our code so if i type q's in here so the first word is swift it has no q and each time i enter an incorrect letter the q i see the flower has one less leaf in it nice now let me just speed through making eight incorrect guesses and so when we reach this point in the app when we have no guesses remaining I should hide the text field and the guess a letter button and show the another word button. That's the button the user can press if they want to guess another word. We'll want to fix that as well. And we see that didn't happen here. But first, let's set a fixed height to the text view so that our interface doesn't jump around after we make our first guess. So I'll use the jump bar to go to the top of my body variable, my body property. And what I want to do is find the text view with game status message in it. And just before the padding modifier, I'm going to add a frame modifier with dot frame and in between parens. All I need is the height parameter. So that's lowercase height colon, and I'm going to set this to 80. I actually tested it out beforehand and 80 seems to work well. And while I'm at it, just below this, I'm also going to include the dot minimum scale factor modifier passing in 0.5. So if I need even more room, I'm going to shrink down the font. And we will have a situation when the users guessed all the words where we're going to have even more text in here. So we will eventually take advantage of minimum scale factor. But we'll see if we go ahead and build and run to test this. Here we're starting out with a how many guesses message on two lines. And then if I guess a single letter, the interface no longer jumps since the text view has a fixed height of 80 points. Nice. So now we need to allow the user to click the another word button so that they can play another word when they're done guessing the current word. When are they done guessing the current word? When one of two things happen. First, when the word is correctly guessed and that happens when there are no underscores in the revealed word, they've guessed all the letters. Or when we've run out of guesses, that would be when guesses remaining equal zero. So let's code this. In update gameplay, after we update the flower image, I'll enter a comment, when do we play another word? If revealed word dot contains, I'll put in a string which is just an underscore character, open and close curlies. But of course, what we're looking for here is not when the revealed word has an underscore or contains an underscore, but when it does not contain an underscore. That means all the letters have been guessed. So in order to find out when it does not contain an underscore, we can put the not operator, the exclamation point in front of revealed word here. And I'll put a comment at the end of this line, guessed, meaning a word, when no underscore in revealed word. Then down below the if clause, we need an else, open and close curlies clause. And this else should be an else if. Guesses remaining equals equals zero. That means we've run out of all of our guesses. And in the comment here is word missed. In other words, the player used up all their guesses. So what do we do in this first set of curlies if the player guessed the word? Well, we're going to set the game status message equal to you guessed it. It took you string interp guesses to guess the word. And in the string interp, we'll pass in letters guessed dot count. And then below this, we'll say words guessed plus equals one. That's going to update the game stats at the top of our app. And we'll add one to our current word index with current word index plus equals one. And to get the interface to show the another word button and to hide the text field in the guess a letter button, we need to set the play again hidden button equal to false. 
Remember, that's that Boolean value we set with an if statement back when we created the interface for this app. And then down here, if we run out of guesses, we want to do something similar to what we did above, but we're going to set the game status message equal to, so sorry, you're all out of guesses. Then we'll increment words missed with words missed plus equal one. Again, that will update the game status up top. And we'll also say current word index plus equals one, so we can move on to the next word. And we also need to set play again hidden equal to false, again, so that that another word button shows, and we hide the text field and the guess a letter button. Now we'll also notice this code up here, when we first updated the game status message, we only update the game status message like this when we haven't guessed a word or run out of guesses. So why don't we highlight this line, cut it out, and we'll add an else clause to our if else if statement, and we'll paste this into the else clause because we only do this when we haven't guessed guessed a word or run out of guesses. And I'll put a comment in here in the else clause that just says, keep guessing. So those are our three alternatives when the users either guess the word or they've lost because they've run out of guesses or they can continue guessing. So let's build and run and see this in action. I'll guess the correct letter S, but then I'll guess all incorrect letters. What happens when we have eight bad guesses? Flowers wilted. And we get the so sorry message and the text field and the guess a letter button are properly hidden and the another word button properly shows. Plus we get the stats have been updated up top on our app. We see that one word was missed and we have two more words left to guess. Very nice. Now let's build and run again. And why don't we guess the word properly this time with S W I F T. And we get a game status message of you've guessed it. It took you five guesses to guess the word. Great. Now clicking another word doesn't do anything yet, so let's add the game mechanics for resetting to another word if the button is pressed. So we'll enter code for playing another word up in the button action for another word, and we can finally delete this to-do comment because we're going to add another word action in here, and we'll add a new comment, reset after word was guessed or missed. So now let's think through what we need to do when the user clicks another word. Well first we need to set up the next word to get. Now we've already incremented the current word by one, so here we should be able to just say word to guess equals words to guess. Make sure that you select the plural, that's the string array, and we'll pass in between square brackets current word index. Then we need to reset the revealed word to all underscores, and hey, we already wrote the code for this. Remember we copied and pasted it in from the code we wrote in our playground two lessons ago? So I'm going to press command F to bring up the find bar, and I'm just going to type revealed word up here, and I see it in this line here in on appear. So I'm going to highlight this code, copy it, and up in another word button, I'll paste it into that button action. So now our new word will show up as all underscores. Then we need to set the letters guessed back to empty string, because the user is going to start to guess new letters for this new word. So that's just letters guessed equals empty string. Then we need to reset the guesses remaining back to eight, or we should use the constant that we created. So we'll just say guesses remaining equals maximum guesses, remember that constant. And then we need to show a fresh flower with image name equals the string flower, string interp, passing in guesses remaining. Then we'll reset the game status message string to what we had at the start of the game, which was just how many guesses to uncover the hidden word, question mark. Then we'll need to hide this another word button and show the text field and guess a letter button. And we do that by setting the play again hidden equal to true. So let's try to run this in Canvas. I'll click on the resume button up here. And ugh, it looks like I still have that problem where I can't type into the preview on the canvas. Let me try this as a workaround. So I'm going to click on the selectable icon in the bottom of the preview. That's just to the right of the play button. Then I'll click back on the play button, the live button. And oh great, it looks like it's allowing me to finally type into the preview. So I'm going to enter an S, a W, and a bunch of Qs. So I haven't guessed this first word. I've run out of guesses. I get a message in game message status that says, sorry, you're all out of guesses. I see the another word button. I'm going to click another word. And now I see things have restarted properly. I'm going to enter dog, D-O-G, and cat, C-A-T. But now look what happens after I click another word after successfully guessing the word cat, which was the last word in my words to guess array and boom, the code crashes. Now when code crashes in live preview, it's kind of tough to tell where it crashed and why. You get a lot of useless information in a dialog box, but here's a pro tip. You can click OK to get rid of this dialog box and then build and run in the simulator. If you do this, more often than not, the line where the error occurred will be highlighted in red and you can click on that line or look on the console for an error message that's usually much easier to read than anything that you would find hidden inside of the error report dialog box. So let's dismiss this dialog by pressing OK and we'll build and run in the simulator. And now I'm going to go through guessing three words really quickly to get where my code crashed before. So swift and dog and cat. And at the end of cat, 
I'm gonna click another word and the debug navigator pops up on the left, but even better, the line where my code crashes is highlighted so I can see where the crash happened and down in the console I can see index out of range. Oh yeah, if I'm incrementing current word index by one, and then when I try to access a value in words to guess that's one greater than the last element in that array, then my code's gonna crash because the index is out of range. I'm one more than the maximum number of elements in that array. So I need to recognize when my current word index is equal to the words to guess dot count. And if this is the case, then I should do everything I need to in order to reset the game, not just reset the word. So let's do this. So I've already hit the navigation pane. I'm gonna hide the debug pane and click stop to clear out our error line in our code. And one thing I wanna do is when the user has guessed all of the words, the name on the another word button should be different. I don't want it to say another word. If they've guessed all the words, I want it to say something like restart game question mark. So instead of hard coding another word in here for the button title, let's create a variable to hold a title that we can change. So up top in our properties, I'll put this right underneath where I say play again hidden is true. and I'll say at state private var play again button label equals and we'll initially set this to another word question mark. So that's the first title that that button should have. And now at the end of our update gameplay function, we can change the value for the play again button if we've guessed all the words. So just before we set guess letter equal to empty string, we'll say if current word index equals equals word to guess dot count open and close curlies. Now remember we incremented current word index up here and the last element of any array is gonna be its count minus one. So if this is true, then we've exceeded the number of words that are available to guess, meaning the number of words in the array words to guess. We've tried to guess them all. So if that's the case, then in between the curlies, we wanna set play again button label, the value we just created, equal to the string restart game question mark. And let's also add to our game status message. So we'll say game status message equals game status message plus, and in between quotes, we'll say backslash n, so we're gonna add a line feed, and at the end we'll just say, you've tried all the words, period, restart from the beginning, question mark. And now up in the another word button action, let's first replace the button title in here. So we shouldn't have the string literal another word in here. Let's highlight and delete that and replace it with play again button label, that value we just created and we just set down in our update gameplay function. So now inside this button action, we wanna add code to reset gameplay. And we only wanna do this if we've guessed all the words. So I'm gonna add a comment that says, if all the words have been guessed, and we check this with the code, if current word index equals equals word to guess dot count, open and close curlies. So the same check we did in the previous function. And in between the curlies, what we're gonna do is reset current word index equals zero. On the next line, words guessed equals zero. On the next line, words missed equals zero. And we'll reset play again button label to the string another word, since that's what the next value of this button should be. Now let's build and run in the simulator to make sure everything is working well. No errors, hammer time. And now I don't wanna guess the first word correctly, but I will guess the next two correctly. And after guessing cat, notice the button says restart game, that's what I wanted. The game status message also says, you've tried all of the words, restart game from the beginning. That's what we wanted as well. Now look at our game status up here. We've got words guessed as two, words missed as one. There are no more words to guess, so the values look good, but let's press that restart game button. We don't get our crash here. The game stats reset perfectly. My cursor looks a little funky, but that's just my buggy X code. But I can guess Swift. Look at the button name now. Another word it says in here. So reset the button name for me. Perfect, just what I want. And I'll guess the word dog, but I won't guess the word cat correctly. Then I get my restart game button and the appropriate message. Game maker, your game is looking slick. Now all we have to do is add some animation and sound, and we'll do that in the next video. Keep hacking.